The next idea that we're going to uh, touch is acceleration. If your speed changes in a certain amount of time, or if your velocity changes in a certain amount of time, then if it gets faster, it's accelerating. If it gets slower, then it has a negative acceleration that's called decelerating. So an acceleration is actually another math problem. It's not just, remember, velocity was distance divided by time. Acceleration now is velocity divided by time. What is the change in your velocity? Has it gone up? Has it gone down? Div uh, subtract those two numbers and then divide by the time that it takes to make the difference. I mentioned just a second ago that if you turn the wheel of your automobile, you are accelerating. All right, so why is that? If you go from 40 to 50, everybody can understand that you're accelerating, you're getting faster. But if you stay 40 miles an hour and go around a curve, you're actually accelerating, even if you stay 40 miles an hour, because that turn, you're changing your direction, that means you've changed your velocity. If your velocity has to have direction in it, that means in order to stay the same velocity, you have to stay the same direction. I think you may have felt this in the car. If you drive, you know that if you're coming into a curve, you have to slow down going into the curve. And then once you're in a curve, you can then accelerate out of the curve. But if you take a curve too fast for the conditions of the road or for the, or for the turn of the, of the curve itself, you will go off the road. Um, if you're in a left-hand turn, you'll usually go off the road to the right. If you're in a right-hand turn, you usually go off the turn to the left. The reason why is because by turning the wheel, you've actually changed the velocity. If you're changing the velocity in a certain amount of time, that's called acceleration. And so you're, you, are, you have this idea, the very touched first idea of circular motion and circular acceleration. So the definition or the equation of acceleration is the change in velocity divided by the time it takes to do it. So here's an example. You're at 40. In five seconds, you're at 45. Okay, so I need to know its change in velocity and then the change in time. So let's see. Your speed is 40, 40 kilometers per hour. Okay, 40 kilometers per hour. So if you go up to 45, you take the final minus the initial. So 45 minus 40 gives you 5 kilometers per hour. That's your change in velocity. However long it took you to do that, it was five, uh, five kilometers per hour. If you change it in five seconds, then what is your, your acceleration? You start with five kilometers per hour, divide it by five seconds, so five divided by five is one, and so you have one kilometer per hour difference every second. And since we went from 40 to 50, 45, we're actually gaining, or it's a positive acceleration of one kilometer per hour every second. So kilometer per hour, remember, is your speed or your velocity. Per second means in the amount of time it's changing at that rate. Galileo loved marble ramps. Okay, we've got some marble ramps we're going to use. And he saw that the steeper the marble ramp, the closer it was to what eventually everyone's idea is gravity. If it's not running on the ramp, then it's not slowing down by the ramp. It's only being uh, dropped through the air, essentially. Just because that ramp is beside it doesn't mean it's really engaged with it. So the steeper inclines give you faster accelerations. So the fastest ramp would be no ramp at all, and it's dropping straight down, and that will be based on gravity. The acceleration of gravity is based upon the mass of the Earth um, and the mass of whatever it is that's rolling down the hill. So if you ignore air resistance, we can get, we can, um, we can know that the acceleration due to gravity is about 9.81 meters per second squared. That means it's getting faster 10 meters per second every second. So every second that it falls, it's getting 10 meters per second faster. So that's what free fall is. Free fall is there if you ignore 
uh, the air resistance, which there is air resistance, the only thing that's pulling the ball is gravity. There is no friction from, the, uh, from a track or anything like that because there is no track. And so 9.81 is specifically 9.81 meters per second squared, which is 9.8 meters per second faster every second. That is the Earth's acceleration due to gravity. The last idea we're going to look at is free falling, and so we need to know what the velocity is at any time. So gravity is a constant. Everywhere on the Earth's surface, it's going to be 10 meters per second, 9.81. That means if I know how, how much time that it's fallen, if it's every second, it's going to get 10 meters per second. Then after one second, I know that it's gone from 10 times 1 is 10. After one second, it's 10 meters per second. After two seconds, it's 2 times 10, so it's 20. After 3, it's 3 times 10, it's 30. So you can guess the velocity, V equals GT, G is gravity. And we could round it to 10. It's 9.81 meters per second squared. But the speed of the ball that's falling is based upon how many seconds that it's falling in a gravity field, and that gravity is 10 times whatever that is. Finally, we're able to, to know that um, gravity times time is velocity. I've changed it to A, just generically. Gravity is an acceleration. There's an acceleration due to gravity, and that acceleration is G. But the generic uh, um, equation is velocity equals AT, acceleration times time. If I know how much something is accelerating times time, then at any place I know how fast it's moving. The last is the distance. I can find out how far something has traveled if I know what the acceleration is and what the time is. Now if I have, say, a car that's accelerating at a certain rate, then it would be A times the number of seconds it's moving twice times, you know, that's squared, divided by two. That will be the total distance that, say, a drag racer car would have gone. If, if A, or acceleration, is gravity, then your distance of something falling out of an airplane would be one-half times G, gravity, 10, times the time squared. And that's how you'll find out the distance. We're going to play with all of these numbers.